Welcome to another episode of Chalk It Up, where it don't matter if you win or if you lose, we just got to charge it to the game. I am your humble host, Tone the Shields, and I am eternally grateful and humbled by you guys locking in with me for another episode. I'm so glad y'all tuning into my YouTube channel. Make sure y'all like and subscribe to the channel. Like the video, comment under the video. I want to get you guys opinions. I want to hear what you guys have to say about the content. I want to just pick you guys' brains about be it football, be it about the Eagles, be it about whatever's on your mind, because I care. And you guys are always on my heart and on my mind. And it's always love. But on this episode, we're going to do an analysis and a breakdown of the Philadelphia Eagles wide receiver draft pick, fifth round, 168th pick overall, John Hightower. Make sure y'all stay tuned, y'all. It's going to be a goodie. Now, John Hightower is a 6'2", 189-pound wide receiver coming out of Boise State University. He actually started his football career at a junior college his first two years, and then he transitioned over to Boise State University his junior and senior year. The kid honestly looks like he has high upside. His, his talent is very, very raw. But I honestly believe through hard work and dedication, and if he truly puts his mind to it and surrounds himself with the right veterans, the kid can honestly excel. He has all the physical uh, tangibles that you that you like. Like I said, 6'2", wide receiver, 189 pounds. To be quite frank, when he was in college playing, he actually weighed 172 pounds, but the kid put on 189 pounds. I'm sorry, he didn't put on 189 pounds, excuse me. The kid weighs 189 pounds now. He put on about 15 to 17 pounds of muscle. So that just goes to show you about his dedication to not only his craft, but his body. Uh, arm length, 31.5 inches. Hands, almost 10 inches. So he has pretty decent sized hands as well for a wide receiver. Now, when it comes to his combine, the combine, he actually did very well at. Um, in my humble opinion, he performed well enough for, where, for what was expected. And I think he exceeded some people's expectations just based off of where he's projected to go or where he was projected to go in that draft. But when it comes to the combine, um, he had he actually had one of the faster times. He had um, he was top 10 amongst the wide receivers in times. He put up a 4.43 for his 40-yard dash, about a 1.54 when it comes to a 10 yard split. So that's pretty good when it comes to a wide receiver getting out, you know, the, those first degrees of separation from the DB, those first 10 yards are crucial when it comes to a wide receiver, being able to just break away in that instant. But his vertical was also um, solid as well. The vertical is important because you have to catch that ball at the high point. So if you couple his 38.5 inch vertical with his 6'2 frame, I think John Howard Tower can be extremely successful. I, honest, I honestly believe that. When you think about his body type, he kind of resembles the Justin Jefferson, C.D. Lamb. Those guys, I believe, have a little bit more weight on them. But when it comes to height and frame, I believe he's he's in, he's in the same class of those guys when it comes to just his build. Obviously, there's a talent, a pure talent discrepancy. And John High Tower would obviously have to work much harder than those guys. But regardless, at the end of the day, like I've said in my last video when it came to Jalen Rager, hard work beats talent every single time. But there were key points from the draft I wanted to um, lock in on. I mentioned his 40 time. To be exact, he had the eighth, the eighth best 40 time amongst wide receivers. So he put up a 4-4-3. And when it comes to the vertical jump, he tied for eighth best amongst wide, receiver, wide receivers as well with 38.5 inches. And I already mentioned his weight, the, phys the physicals. I'm truly, truly, I truly, like I mentioned about Jalen Rager, I respect that he didn't avoid the bench press, right? He didn't avoid showing how strong he was just for his size. And then when it comes to Giant Hightower specifically, he knew he was coming in undersized. He knew he, when, he, when, when, he, when he signed in for the draft, he knew he would have been oversized. So in between that time of his final college game and going into the draft and the combine, the dude put on about 15 to 17 pounds of muscle. So that just speaks to his dedication to his body. That's important. Guys like that, guys having guys like that in the locker room is truly, truly 
it can't be it can't be understated it can't go it can't be overlooked either because for the simple fact when you have guys that don't really care about their bodies that could be a detriment to not only your team but that could be a detriment to the culture you're trying to build the eagles just came off one of the most injury riddled seasons of all time and somehow some way we managed to fall into the playoffs obviously through our hard work and through our diligence but it wasn't easy we were literally playing with half the playbook and with our hands tied behind our backs we can't deal with guys who don't value the tools they're given the god-given tools they're given which is their bodies so i truly commend john hightower for truly dedicating himself to his body and adding on more muscle knowing it could only help him in the long run and just speaking about his his muscle, his strength, his weight. A lot of people consider that a weakness of his. Um, when he first finished, you know, when he finished college, um, weighing at 172, a lot of people consider the, that 172 to be a weakness because it showed on tape. Um, according to the evaluators, of course, a lot of evaluators, a lot of evaluators claim that John truly wasn't able to outmuscle the, some of the better, some of the stronger DBs when it came to catching the ball at the high point. Um, obviously at that time he weighed 172 pounds. So since then putting on the, putting on the 15 or 17 additional pounds of muscle can only help him, um, in that regard. Evaluators also mentioned that he struggled when it came to physical press man coverage. He never consistently created separation. And on top of that, his hands needed improvement. Okay. Now when it comes to his strengths. They mentioned great speed. He has a track and field background. That's dope. The Eagles are somehow trying to build a track team. I'm with it. I'm, I'm all for it. Uh, obviously, I mentioned he had a strong performance at the combine. Above average route running ability. Very smooth and fluid in and out of his movements, in and out of the breaks. He doesn't really have the sharpest moves, but he's very smooth. Uh, and... According to evaluators, he was able to catch the ball at the high point, not consistently, but well enough. And he has kick return ability. The film shows that as well. And let me say this. I'm going to be honest. I'm not a fan of some of these evaluators. I don't know their names. I don't know who they are. I really don't know who they work for entirely. Let's just call them NFL scouts or recruiters. However you want to slice them. I'm not really a fan of these guys for one simple reason. I feel like they contradict themselves time and time again. And the reason I say that is because while they'll say, hey, this guy, he doesn't really have the ability to create separation regularly as a weakness. But in the same breath, they'll say this guy has deceptive speed. He knows how to lose the defender. So you're contradicting yourself in my humble opinion. I'm no professional. Let's make that very clear. I'm far from a professional. But some of these evaluators are just contradicting themselves. And obviously, they're just, they're, we're all just throwing things at a wall to see if it sticks. We're all just hoping the best for these guys. And especially me, being a Philadelphia Eagles fan, I'm just hoping for the best from, uh, obviously, Harvey Roseman, Doug Peterson, the roster. Um I'm hoping for the best from those guys. I'm hoping for I'm hoping for the best from these draft picks, these new young guys we got coming in. I'm always hoping for the best, and I'm always going to try to pull gems from their game that I feel like that we can truly build on and grow off of. I'm sorry, uh, but evaluators, y'all got to be a little bit more. Is, is it this or is it that? Does he does, does, can the kid catch or can he? Does he have good hands or not? Can he create separation or can he? I feel like when it came to John High Towers evaluations i just kept saying contradictions and it was hard for me to truly get a feel for what they were what they were talking about so obviously i had to go in and do my own due diligence as well and look at his own and look at some of the highlights i was able to find look at his film and from what i was able to see when it came to john hightower the evaluators mentioned smooth that's very evident from one of the first watches from the first look sees of, of his game John Hightower is very smooth in and out of his movements. Even when he takes his first step, when he makes decisions on cuts and when he makes decisions on breaks in the route, he's very smooth. And I like that. I like that for the simple fact that he it's not, he doesn't show his hand, it's deceptive. It's almost like having a pretty decent poker face or having that 
that perfect sleight of hand. Uh, you know, a magician never reveals his tricks. And the key to being a magician is having that sleight of hand, being able to do things in front of the naked eye without the naked eye necessarily seeing what you're doing. So I think it's important to be smooth in and out of your breaks. Um, it, it, things come natural to you. I think that's what translates to, translates to him being more of a, a an above average route runner, like I mentioned earlier. But like I said, based off what I've seen, his speed is very deceptive. He's smooth. He's not flashy. He just, he just gets the job done. Uh, he's capable of finding the soft spots in the zones. And that's important. When you're not the fastest and you're not the biggest or the strongest, you just know how to manipulate man, manipulate coverages. And I think that's extremely important. Also, he, he does great when it comes to transitioning from the catch into the run. I think he has strong rackability. When, I think he's going to have strong rackability. And um, decent ball tracking skills. I noticed a lot when the ball was underthrown or overthrown, he knew how to adjust. And when it came to a lot of, you know, touch and go balls, a lot of 50 50 balls, he knew how to adjust. He knew how to make do what was given. And his quarterback play wasn't the best. He didn't have the most consistent quarterback play, similar to Jalen Rager. It wasn't really the best, but he made do with what he had, and he was very successful. Almost a thousand yards um, accumulated through the air. Um, I believe he had about six touchdowns in college. So he was so he was productive. And he never gives up on the ball. That's important to me. He has several several moments on film he hasn't he did not give up on the ball. And I love that about wide receivers. Sometimes the ball isn't given to you in the most optimal situation. Sometimes it might be a tip ball. You can't give up on that ball because that might be that might give a, a safety or a slot corner the opportunity to, to you know to recover off of off of anything i truly like wide receivers that are able to just see something and if things go wrong they adjust they may adjust their they may adjust their route they may adjust their hands they may adjust the placement of their body they may do anything just to make that ball a little easier coming into the bread basket so i'm truly excited for um having john hightower uh when it comes to his character though he seems like a, he seems like a really good dude seems like a real good kid honestly um uh, you know, coming up, he lost one of his closest friends. His, uh, the kid's um, the kid's name was Marcel Slim Preston. Uh, he lost him. He passed away. So rest in peace, uh, Marcel Preston. Every time uh, Hightower scores, he always points to his, points to his name on his back, then points to his wrist, points to his forearm. There's a tattoo that says "Long Live Slim." That's you know that's, that was a nickname he called his friend. So you know, John Hightower has strong character he has a strong foundation of morals that he stands on and you know coming to philly from landover maryland my man brought his biking skills he's an avid cyclist the dude always popping willies and you know his footage out there him uh his footage, his footage out there of him being on his bike literally willying and pedaling no hands you know I, I, either to practice or whatever film study wherever he was on his way to he was on a boise state campus and he was just doing his thing, man. So I'm, I'm truly excited to have a kid like John Hightower in our locker room. He seems like he's eager. Uh, he's one of the older wide receivers we picked up. And I think that could be a gift and a curse. Obviously, you don't get that many years out of him as far as health. You don't know what that may lead to. But at the same time, there's a maturity, there's a maturity standpoint. He did everything wasn't handed to him. He had to earn what he got. And I think that's the type of guys that we went after when it came to our talent this year. So um, that's all I have for you guys today. I'm so glad y'all tuned into another episode of Chalk It Up, where no matter if you win or if you lose, we just got to charge into the game. I'm so grateful. Make sure y'all tune in to more episodes. Check out the old episodes. Check out my other content on my YouTube channel. Make sure y'all like, subscribe, comment, do all that. Give me your input. I love it. I need it. I thrive on it. I love y'all. Stay humble. Stay healthy. And most importantly, stay hungry. One love. <laughs>